All right, so um, I've got a site that's uh, been resurrected as we've been doing previously. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, one thing, uh, one, one concept before we get into finally the e-commerce aspect of things. We'll definitely start e-commerce today. But I want to cover one thing before that that is always on people's minds uh, beforehand. So uh, I'm going to write some notes. I'm going to put these notes into the network folder at the end of the day. But this topic that we need to talk about first is this nagging number up at the top here, which changes. And those are our updates. So we're going to talk about uh, updates today. Then we'll do e-commerce. So we'll have our lecture about updates first. WordPress updates. We have, first of all, why, what, and how. So on the why of WordPress updates, like any other software, there are updates. And you might have wondered why. Now, updates can happen on your phone, on your computer, on your laptop, on your tablet. On your phone, for example, you put it charging overnight. You wake up the next morning and suddenly it tells you you've got updates and click here and you click it and then everything's changed. Your icons are different and things are moved and it asks you to approve things and whatever. Or maybe you're at home and you're on your Mac or your Windows and it pops up and says you need to do updates. You try to ignore it for a while but then eventually it forces you. You need to do updates. Well, the why of all of this is for security. As I've talked before uh, about plugins, remember when I was saying if we have like a choice of 10 different plugins, we have different ways to figure out which is the right one for us. And I had mentioned that one of the ways that you decide what's the right plugin is how old it is. Because plugins also are software that gets updated. And therefore, people can hack into the code and therefore hack into your site. Worst case scenario, trying to scare you. You know, you could be hacked. And one of the reasons you get your site gets hacked is because your software is out of date. So security updates to the code that keeps your site safe. Short answer. There's a longer answer, of course. But the short answer is one of the reasons you might want to do updates is because of security, so that your code is not, is not outdated and making your site vulnerable, which is even worse when you're an e-commerce site, because I'm going to store a lot of stuff about my customers. I don't want to get hacked, because it's not just me getting hacked. It's my customers getting hacked. So security updates. One of the reasons why we have updates is security. Another reason is features. New stuff for your site. There may be a plugin that originally maybe my my maybe my newsletter plugin uh, had three features, and then with this new update now I have a fourth feature. Now I'm able to send sounds with my newsletter. Let's say so these theme or these uh, authors of the software might give you new features. I know, for example, when I use my phone and I get these updates, I like to look at what am I about, what am I going to get? And oftentimes it says bug fixes or stability improvements. And it's even more exciting when it says new feature XYZ. So the why of updates is for this, basically. Keep your site secure and you get new features. Um, what gets updated? WordPress core software. WordPress, well, we'll keep it simple. Uh, themes and plugins. These are the three different pieces of software that might get updated on your site. So this is, you know, the main WordPress software, the foundation. Everything runs on top of WordPress. Your, uh, your login screen, your products, um, any sound or video or pictures are all running on top of WordPress. Basically, it's the foundation of your whole site. It could be updated. It could require updates um, when necessary. Themes, of course, are uh, the style, the design, of your site. 
so the interface of your site, the, the columns, how it's set up, and the footers, and all of that, the, the theme. Remember, we've been working with uh, the 2017 theme, and we've played around with other themes. Well, that theme, that's also software, that's also code, that also needs updates. And lastly, plugins. Remind me, what's a plugin? What's your definition of a plugin? Things you can make it do. Extra things you can make it do. WordPress has a variety of things it can do out of the box, but then when we need it to do extra things, e-commerce. Um, have you ever been to a website where there's a little pop-up in the corner that says, how can we help you? Live chat with us. We can do that. We can add that to our site as well. That's not built into WordPress. That would be a plugin. When we talk about e-commerce today, that's going to be a plugin. So extra things that we can make WordPress do are plugins. And all of these could require updates. The how to do it. Easy way. Click updates icon and then uh, click update all. The hard way. What we'll learn right now. It's super easy in theory to do your updates. Uh, in theory. In practice, it's a little more complex, which is what we'll talk about right now. I'll summarize it right here. Back up your site. These updates are going to change the basic features of your site. And we're working with the official WordPress software as part of the core software. But most likely, we're using a variety of different themes and plugins from different companies. Different companies putting their code together to work on your site. And there are instances. I've experienced it in real life with my own personal sites and with client sites that there have been incompatibilities. When we update a plugin from 3.1 to 3.5, something breaks. So if we've got a backup of the site, we can bring it back to the point before the update and figure out how to fix it properly or do the update properly and have a, a good update result. Uh, even on your own computer, like on Windows, uh, I did an update recently on, on my version of Windows at home and then uh, it then said clean up old version of Windows so I said yeah clean that up it's taking up space and it says if you remove this old version of Windows you cannot go back to it so uh, having a backup of the software just in case to go back uh, in case there's an issue could be useful So the first thing we'll do is we, uh, the first thing I would recommend to do is to make a backup of your site which of course would be duplicator plugin two Update core, update WordPress core. I wrote these in that specific order because everything lies on top of the core software. It's a good idea to first update the core software, then update the themes, then the plugins. If you want to be very detailed about this, step three: test your site. You do an update of the of the of the core software. You test your site. Does the shopping cart still work? Are my pages still okay? Okay, great. Back up the site because next is update themes. Then test the site. That works. Back up the site. And lastly, plugins, update plugins. Guess what's next? Test the site. Back up the site. OK, easy answer. One click, you're done. Hard answer, 10 things. And it does seem like a lot more extra work than the easy way, and it is. Because from personal experience, I can tell you, sometimes this happens. When, uh, when I st first started using WordPress nearly 10 years ago, um, 
it was a it was newer it was a little more buggy there were different software plugins and themes and everything trying to be compatible and it was a little more common in the old days 10 years ago uh, to uh, do this uh, so people would not add very many plugins or people would not do updates and the problem with those ways is well if you don't add plugins you don't add a lot of cool features well I can live with that worse is if you don't do the updates you could be vulnerable your software could have bugs to be exploited so you it is more of a hassle to do it the right way but it's better in the long term because the biggest thing you might not care about features but the biggest thing is I care about security and you should care about security especially if you're doing an e-commerce site there are shortcuts all of these right here about testing your site in between every update those could be skipped um, definitely you want a backup before you do updates you could then do an update of the of the WordPress core then your theme then your plugins then test it and then back it up that could work but again it's happened to me that I go this far this this skip this go here start to do two plugins and then the site crashes and then I have to figure out well what 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 broke it was it updating the core software or was it updating the theme or was it updating the second of eight plugins so you can decide how much extra work you want to do three four six and seven after you do this part test your site and then definitely also back up your site that way you've got a copy of your site just in case in this point in history and then if you ever need to back up to it for some reason you have a site backup yes yeah even that far I would do that update plugins one at a time because it has happened uh, I'm giving you the worst case scenarios of what's happened usually there it goes off without a hitch but worst case scenarios, what have happened has happened is I've gone through all of these steps doing backups, then you get to this part and I say, well, I'll just do select all, update all. And then at some point it fails, you know, seven out of ten plugins, and then I have to back it up. So uh, it might be more useful to do it one at a time, and we'll see how to do that in a moment. Yes, that's that's the issue about is that plugin compatible with the version of, of WordPress you're updating. So most of these authors um, have to be on top of that. Most of these plugin authors have to be on top of that. So they do regular updates of their software, but then they also do an update when there's a new version of WordPress. They want to be up to date as well for people to keep downloading and using their software. So this is the big idea, we'll do this together in a moment, but does that make sense? WordPress has updates just like any other software. You should do the updates, but it's not as easy as a simple click. And we'll see the live example right now. Does that make sense? Any questions? Let's give it a shot. So I'm logged into the site, and on the top we can see it in two places. If you're in the dashboard, you see updates six, and you should always see one up here, the spinning arrow. That's also saying updates. And um, you want to click on that either at the top or the left here under dashboard. Go ahead and click that update button. That doesn't do any updates until you approve them right here. And again, we'll look at it in general before we do anything. Um, I wish it was in the order that I wrote it here where I recommended uh, do the uh, core software first, then the themes, then the plugins. This screen shows it as the software, the core software first, uh, then the plugins, then the themes. So it's a little out of order. I would recommend the software, then the themes, then the plugins. But before we do any of these updates, getting an overview. Um, it says version 4.96 of WordPress is out. Um, we've got version 4.95. So 
So when there's these version numbers, usually it's in three digits. And the last digit on the right is often a minor update. Uh, it tweaks perhaps a few simple things. The next number up is more complex updates, and the next number up is huge updates to the, to the software. Question? Uh, when it says uh, like compatibility with WordPress 4.9.6 with 100% I, I realize that's great. When it says compatibility unknown for that revision of software, should you not upgrade that so that it says 100%? Exactly. If you see over here that this is compatibility unknown, I would wait to update that until they catch up and confirm that their plugin works with the version you're about to update to. Yes. No. So we're seeing that 495 is going to be wants to become 496. Um, and if we do go to 496, in this case, these two plugins, it says, okay, well. Um, Contact Form 7 and Duplicator are currently working perfectly, in theory, on your current version of WordPress, and they should work just fine on the 496. So I'd be comfortable doing those two updates. If then it says unknown or some lower percentage or something, I might hold off. I might think about doing the update or not, based on a couple more things I'll tell you in a moment. What's also updatable here is the themes. 2015 theme can go from 1.9 to 2.0, 17 can go from 1.5 to 1.6, and 2016. Let me make a note right here regarding updates of uh, themes. Recommendation or tips on updating themes. Number one, keep only your main theme and a backup theme installed in your site. I might have a cool theme installed on my site. Remember there was one a while ago we looked at, it. I think it was called Brita. I could have the Brita theme installed, that's my main design, but I also want to keep a backup of, my, uh, of a different theme. In this site, uh, we've got 2017 as the main theme. It doesn't show it here, but I just remember that back on appearance, that's where it shows it. See, 2017 is the main, it's okay, Brit, right there. So, we should have our main active theme and one backup theme. We could have 17 themes installed, but we only can have one active. Therefore, all of those other 15 themes hanging around are wasting resources. They're taking up space on the server, and they're taking up your bandwidth, your, um, your traffic on your site, because even though I'm never using these themes, these themes are still going to connect back to WordPress.org and check, is there a new update? Is there a new update? Is there a new update? I don't know how often, like maybe once a month or two weeks or something. But this theme that I'm never going to use is wasting my traffic on my site. That's the reason to only have a main theme and a backup. Uh, any other themes besides that uses or wastes resources? Another reason to keep a ba uh, different uh, theme is just in case perhaps your current theme, for whatever reason, does get hacked, and suddenly your site has all of these pop-ups about stuff that, I don't know what, cheapcanadianmedicine.com or something. Well, your theme might be hacked, and therefore, if you activate an alternate theme, that will at least start to help you fix the issue of what got hacked. That's worked. Uh, for us, for clients, where um, whatever reason the site, their site, someone hires us because their site got hacked, one of the first things we, we would do is to switch back to a different theme and then try to fix things. It may not look like that amazing theme as before, but at least the site is still working again, at least they're still selling their products, they're not losing money. Yes? On these themes, um are you able to rename it to your own name, even though it was 2013 before? Can you just rename it to, to put in any big changes or specific edits to it? 
No, unfortunately, you cannot change these names very easily. You'd have to go into the code on the server to change that. Um, so, nope, not, not really. These are the names that were the names when the site, when the theme was developed. And that's it. Yes? I don't understand what you call that. Um, you're not keeping a duplicate of the site on this other theme, are you? No. It's just, it's just a design. If I was using the Brit theme, I would want to keep also 17. In case I ever need to switch away, in case I ever need to deactivate this theme and move to this theme because the site got hacked. Right now I've got this one active, so I would keep this one as a backup, and I would delete these two. So basically, two themes, the one that is active and the one just in case you need to switch over to in case you need to. Because if there, if it is a problem and I need to fix my site, I would have to come back to this screen. I would need to go to Add New, I need to go to Install, and who knows if that feature is compromised because the site is hacked. If uh, both of these are already there for you, you can just quickly go to Activate, and that might help you kind of retrieve your site. <coughs> sort of. Remember when you switch from theme to theme, some of these things might automatically transfer over your widgets or your menus and such. Question? So hand over. No? Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you're going to keep all the plugins and both of them. You first keep one as a backup and then you activate the other one and put in all your plugins to put in Or to recreate that backup set? In, in a sense, um, all of your th plugins that exist now will transfer over to the other theme you might just have to you know move them into the right column and such this one has this one has no columns maybe and this one has three columns so you will have your content and all of that but you just may have to populate it back in the right place that's a hard answer to give because I, I, it depends on the nature of what the hack was. Uh, it may be as simple that, okay, the theme, the current active theme got hacked and that's what uh, is causing the spam. Uh, depending on the nature of the hack, that may be the only thing. It may be, however, that other things are infected on your site, so even switching themes won't fix it. Uh, I, I can't say that. Uh, I don't know what what it might be the solution, but I know that from experience in the real world in the real world with a few clients, uh, it, what a couple were able to be fixed that way by simply switching themes and deleting the old theme, because all of the hacked code was in the old theme, and when it was switched over to an unhacked theme, that one was secure. It didn't have the vulnerability that the old one had. That doesn't happen to in every solution. It may be deeper that the whole server is infected with something, and that's going to be a lot harder to fix. Question. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, it depends on the nature of the virus or the hack or whatever about how difficult it is to fix. So you can infect your plugins, you can infect your, uh, yeah. your widgets and all that. And yeah. You can carry it over, you carry it over with it. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly, yeah. It could be any of these things is hacked. It could be a plugin, it could be a theme, it could be a widget. Widgets often come from plugins. It could be the main WordPress. That's why those three things are the things that get updates. The to only keep... way to know is when you try to uh, make it work and it doesn't work, that you... means it's been hacked. Yeah, you can narrow it. You can narrow down the possibilities. Uh, am I hacked because of the theme and I switch to 2015 and then it's gone? Okay, well that might be the issue. Or maybe I need to turn off a plugin. Uh, my site is all hacked and running weird. Maybe I need to turn off contact form seven, and then the hack is gone. And okay, maybe that's the that's the problem. So trial and error. It could be trial and error. Yeah. I've seen sometimes the things they say in 1999, you best things. You take 38 of those things and just off the site, and that's why you actually keep them Keep it clean, uh, keep it lean, yeah, keep your WordPress 
only have the number of plugins necessary, only have the number of themes necessary, um, because. Can you save those other themes off site somewhere, or that's just who cares? You want to get the one, you just want to get the two that you really want. Hi, that's a good question. Um, you, there's no direct way for you to download the theme off site, uh, offline. You have to go to your server. And in the file manager of your server, you can download it that way. But within WordPress, there's no button that says download theme. But that's going to still use up server resources, which is my last website. Yeah, it, it, these are all using up s server resources right here because they're, they're installed but not being used. If you download it off of the file manager on your server, like in cPanel or GoDaddy's file manager or Bluehost, download it off to your personal computer and then you can upload it back again um, but they don't make it very easy to download a theme a complete theme from the WordPress interface yeah. uh, yes that we will be talking about security and such uh, short answer is that's uh, setting up an SSL certificate uh, we'll, we'll be covering that, which is when we get the little lock up on the address bar. Right now there's no lock here. Uh, we'll cover that a little bit later. That's one of the ways to start to build up security to keep your credit card information safe and all of that. Uh, that'll be a deeper discussion a little later. Yes? Yeah. So that lock is under control of the company that provided with the service, right? You mm -hmm. have no control over that. That's right. It's a third party. It's GoDaddy or Bluehost or, or some other company that you pay and, and that it's a trustable company and then it gets set up and then now you have the lock, you have the security. But GoDaddy and such, they will not see, they will not have access or special access to your site. It's just that they provide the lock. They provide the, uh, the security uh, for that, but they don't see anything. Not GoDaddy, but the third party. GoDaddy would be the third party. GoDaddy or Bluehost, you would buy it directly from them, yeah. You would buy the domain name, the server space, and the SSL security certificate, usually from the one company, Bluehost, GoDaddy, etc. And we'll cover that in deeper detail a little later. So for us here, uh, tangibly what I want to do is, okay, this is telling us we've got all of these updates, and telling you what I just told you we're going to waste time doing some of these updates. We don't need some of these themes anymore. Let's go back over to the themes screen and remove some of these themes we don't need. We cannot remove them from here. This screen is to do updates. I want to remove themes. Remind me, where do we go to uh, work with our themes? Appearance and themes, yes. So, in this case, I've got 17 and Brit. I'll say this, that's what I like. I'll keep these two. You can choose your own, whatever you, however you're doing yours. But mine is going to be 17, 2017 and Brit. Therefore, I don't want these other ones. So hover over 2015 and you will see um, a button that says uh, theme details. They kind of have it hidden over here. You have to first hover over and click theme details. And then you'll see a button down in the corner that says delete. I want to delete 2015 and 2016. This will ask you to confirm. That one's gone. And then the same thing for 2016. Delete that. Now, I thought I said over here, back up your site before you do any of this. We have a backup. I have got the backup of the site I made Thursday. So I have the way to go back to the site just in case I have a backup from last week. You yourself would need to get into the habit when you're making any big changes to the back end of the site, you should make a duplicator backup. Remember, you can make as many as you want. Even the free plugin lets you make a thousand backups. No limit. So you should make backups of your site and uh, call it number one, number two, number three, whatever. If I make three backups in one day, I'm just going to add number one, number two, number three to the backup name, and I've got the backups. And remember, you can add notes to the backup so that you can uh, give yourself notes about what you're doing. I've got a backup of the site. And I've got only the two plugins that I care about. I mean, the only two themes that I care about. 
Let's go back to the uh, updates screen. I only have four in total to do. It's asking also um, plugins. We already did this. We should only have the plugins that we care about. We haven't activated a Kismet, but I would want that. We've got Contact Form 7, Duplicator, and Yoast. I don't have any superfluous plugins that are just hanging around using resources because plugins also are the same thing like themes. Don't have any more th uh, plugins than you need than you're using. Those take up resources on your site. Tip on updating themes. I got rid of that as soon as I could. Tips on updating themes and plugins. Only keep your main theme and backup uh, themes that you want. Only keep the plugins that you're using to. And we saw this previously where we can uh, go to a plugin and just click delete. Anyway, then, okay, finally here, okay, we've got updates to, to work with. And uh, this might also tell you at the top here, important, before updating, please back up your database and files for help. Go read this mat go read this article. Well, that's what I'm talking about here. Before doing these updates, uh, we've got um, we've got a backup. Before we do anything else, here's one more thing to say. Note if you've written custom code. custom code for your theme, it will be deleted if you update. So if you went over to the appearance editor and wrote some custom HTML or CSS or JavaScript, and then you go here to update your theme, it will erase all of that because this is going to give you the latest version of the code of the theme. Question? Does that include the, the embed file code that you've done? No. If, you, if you're saying about going to appearance, widgets, and then all of this custom stuff, no. That is safe there. In, this, in the pretty interface here, all of this is safe. When you do your updates, all of that's safe. What's not safe is right here when you go to the editor. I think it even tells you when it pops up. Heads up, you appear to be making direct edits to your theme. We recommend that you don't. Editing your theme, editing your theme directly could break your site, etc. And your changes may be lost in future updates. If you need to tweak more than your theme CSS, you might want to try making a child theme. So I'll make a note of that in a moment. But um, this is where the um, custom code. This is what I mean by custom code. That embed code stuff over on the appearance um, widgets and such, all of that is safe in the database and it knows to keep it safe. In the editor is what I mean. So it will be deleted if you update. That is code you write in dashboard um, appearance editor anywhere else is safe solution use a child theme that's advanced we'll cover it a little bit a little later it's pretty advanced uh, but there is a link that I'll put right there um, that's what it was recommending me to do. Basically, there's a way to duplicate, in a sense, your existing theme. Then you can do all your custom editing on that child theme. Uh, when you do the updates, the parent theme is what gets updated, and then those updates do not affect the child uh, theme where you've made your custom code. It is a little complex to set up. We'll probably cover it a little later in the course. But that's something to be aware of, that if you write custom code, it probably will disappear when you do updates. Yeah? Is it possible that an update could um, interfere with the 
coding a child theme and she was... In my experience, no. Usually, um, updates don't affect your child theme, and uh, in real-world experience, that's... I don't recall there ever being that problem. They set it up on purpose, and when that pop-up came up, it's even telling you, you should use child themes if you're going to write custom code. So they've set it up, and it has worked in my experience, so this is the best way to do it, child themes, but it's a little bit of a setup. Once you've got it set up, you should be fine. So um, there's the manual there, why use it, how to do it, it's a little bit of a setup, and then once you've got it set up, it's you're safe. You're going to have in your uh, appearance here, you're going to have uh, active theme 2017 child, and then the original parent one right here. So you're, you're, you're going to have three of them. Um, your backup site, just in case. Your child theme, which is active, which is based on your parent theme. And when you do the updates, the parent will get updated, and that will not conflict with your child edits. Um, sorry, yeah. I have a then what's actually running the site? Because if your child theme is not updated. It, uh, it, it just works because what is running is the main parent theme. It just looks like here we've got active the child theme, but it knows when I look at theme details, it'll say child of whatever. And so internally the way it works is that WordPress is going to look at the child theme and see that it's running from a, from a parent theme. So WordPress will load up the code of the parent theme and then load the code of the child theme, and then your site works. So when we do the updates, it, it updates the parent theme, leaving alone the child theme, but then you still got updates and security. In a technical way, it does use more resources, but not so much that it's problematic. And that's the way that they're recommending to do it if you're going to do custom code. If we're never going to do any custom code in this editor, then no need to do child themes. But I know for us, for when we get hired by clients, I love this theme, but I wish we can change it this way. So for us, we are often doing custom code for the client, even though they've chosen you know, a theme out of the box that looks good. It's 99% right. And then the 1% that we have to customize is in the editor, and we definitely need to use child themes for that. OK, so knowing all of that, we might be ready to take the plunge. You see why up here, uh, easy way is very, very easy, but long way does require a lot of thought and setup. But once we know that, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So what's my first step in this screen? Update the WordPress core. So let's go ahead and click that one, our first one here. Let's go ahead and update our main WordPress core. Click that. That will take a little moment. So you're seeing there, it's downloading. At the moment, our site, it passed by, but our site was in maintenance mode. Whenever we do any of these updates, our site goes into maintenance mode. If anyone tried to visit our site at that moment, it would say, sorry, the site is in maintenance mode. Please come back later. And then it automatically takes itself off of maintenance mode, and your site is working again. So there's a note to say here. When you to updates, your site goes to maintenance mode, maintain, main, maintenance mode, and then turns back to normal after. So you don't have to shut the site down. It, kind of shuts itself. it shuts itself down in a sense, yeah. So you may want to do updates during low traffic times. Don't do an update of your site in the middle of the day when people are going to your site to buy your product. Do it you know, after normal work hours. Now the problem with that, of course, is uh, it's the internet. People could be visiting at any time in the, in the day. Uh, so uh, you decide whatever low traffic times that is. But I'd say I'd be safe like at 8 p.m., you know, after afternoon. 8 p.m., 7 p.m., 10 p.m., or maybe you do have international customers and 8 p.m. for us is 7 a.m. for them. I don't know. But just be aware that your site sort of shuts itself down into maintenance mode, sort of, and then it goes back to normal when it's done. Yeah? Where do you keep your site backed up? 
if you use Duplicator Pro, if you pay the uh, $39 or $37, whatever it is, it can be set up to automatically make backups on a schedule and save your backup over to like a Dropbox account or Google Drive or OneDrive. That's one way. You can also simply, as you make your duplicator backups and you download them, just keep them somewhere. Like I've got all my site backs backed up on that external drive. You know, I've got an external drive that I that I buy at Best Buy and then keep all my site backed up on that drive. Now, of course, if I lose that driver that breaks, then I lost those backups. But I do like that about Duplicator Pro that you can make up make backups over to some other storage space if you've got those other things. How many of you have a Dropbox account? Uh, how many of you have a, a Google Drive account? How about a OneDrive account? Most people have at least one of them. So depending on your space there, it may be useful to also have it auto backup to it. I did the WordPress 496 backup. It says, OK, thank you for updating. Uh, you can read about what's new. OK, 18 bugs were fixed. If you're really curious, you can follow that link and, and see all the updates. The bug number 43,820 was fixed. And this one and this one. OK, and then so these are all the recent bugs that were fixed. All right, we'll go back to our updates screen. What's the second update we do? Themes. So you can simply select a theme to update and then click Update Theme. This one also gives you the note, any customizations you've made in this theme will be lost. Please consider using child themes. And that should say the customization of the code in the editor. It's kind of scary in terms of, well, even the customization I did under widgets and such, those should be fine. It's going to be the ones in your custom code editor. Yeah. Why do you always go theme? Only that one theme needed an update. My other theme of Brit didn't need didn't need the update. So here it says, OK, update is starting, enabling maintenance mode. If people had visited the site at that moment, it would be down. It's updating that theme, one of one. Successful, you can read those details. Maintenance mode is off, updates complete. It's return to updates. Now with plugins, I would recommend, usually those are the ones that are many more to do updates. So what I would say regarding plugins of uh, updates of plugins uh, for updates of plugins start with your most important plugin first you can do it all at once yes but that's why I would still say start with your most important plugin first because um, I've it's happened to me at least once and once is enough that I sell I do here select all update all and at some point because it's just going to go alphabetically from top to bottom I've had it happen that it's gone through three out of ten and then something crashes and I have to redo the whole thing and which one was it it was that third one and so forth so yeah you can select all and do them all and they go in alphabetical but I would still instead be more safe uh, do the update of the most um, important one first uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of opinion. Which would you say is the most important of these two plugins that I have? Well, Not really. Maybe I would say Contact Form 7 because that's a way for people to contact me and Duplicator is important to make backups of the site. Trick question. They're both important. Um, you can decide which is more important to you in this case. Now, let's say we had our e-commerce plugin with a database of products. That's the one that I would definitely say that's the most important. So I'll just select contact form, update. Usually these update a lot faster than the main WordPress core. Return to those updates. One left. Return to updates. Everything's updated.
because it is time consuming and perhaps tricky, time consumption and possible complication, a backup regimen, 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 regimen. Regimen, yeah, regimen, right? Regimen, yeah. I n, yeah. Uh, a backup regimen of um, once per month is advised. So once a month, at the beginning of the month or the end of the month, whatever, you sit down, uh, and then you do your your update, or you do your backup, then your updates. You test it, looks good. Do a backup. You're 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 safe for that month, or Or um, regimen? Is that right? I don't know what. R E G I. Take the N. Regimen. No. No. Regimen. Okay, now it looks right. There it is. Okay. Regimen. Right? Not regiment, Looks regiment. Good Looks good to me too. Okay, so um, the, um, the other way is, of course, uh, with an auto backup solution, even better. Uh, Duplicator Pro, for example, can uh, back up on a schedule and to an external or a cloud storage. Yes? Does that do what you were suggesting? Um, update, test, update, test? No, it only, it only does the backup. Um, you can have this doing your backup of your site so that you always know you've got a backup of it. But the update stuff, uh, you still have to do that part manually. Yeah. Would you say that this would be a backup that you could overwrite? You, uh, Duplicator, I think uh, it says that it'll keep the last 10 backups, so then they automatically uh, start to erase when they're 10 backups old. So if it's once a month, 10 months ago, do I still need a backup of my site from 10 months ago? So um, depending on how many changes you make to your site, maybe that's enough or maybe not enough. And you can change it. Keep 12 backups or keep all backups. You just need to have the space. And every time, depending on the size of your site, you may be backing up 10 megabytes or 100 megabytes or 300 megabytes every backup. It depends on your site. Yeah, you can also manually do that, take them off of the cloud storage and put them elsewhere in case you still want to keep a backup from a year ago. All right, uh, let's take our first break here. That was our talk about updates. They are necessary. Uh, they are useful. They, they are a little bit of a hassle. But once you have an idea and a, and a regimen to do it, um, then you should be able to do it. And if all else fails, you have a backup, right? So let's take a break and we'll be back at uh, 7.20.